Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. This evening is the second in our series of Kits of the Esther Year, and we're going to be talking about the Renwall 1 to 200 sail scale submarines and Ravel's response to that back in the 1960s with their 1 to 260 scale submarines. So let's start with the Renwall kits. Back in the days when nuclear powered submarines were the biggest thing and were making headlines, Renwall decided to do a little bit of research. And while they didn't get it all right, they got a lot of it right. And they introduced a 1 to 200 scale complete interior submarine back in the early 1960s. Their first issue was of the USS George Washington nuclear ballistic missile submarine. Then they followed it up with the Andrew Jackson and then the Ethan Allen and finally Finally, the holy grail of these 1 to 200 scale subs, the Thomas Jefferson. And why do I say that's the holy grail? Because the Thomas Jefferson had a clear side to it. A lot of the Renwall kits that came out after that had clear sides to them, like the Anatomy series or the large scale radial engine or the large scale V8 engine. But first, were these clear-sided kits associated with the 1 to 200 scale submarines. In response to what Renwall did, Ravel came out with their own box scale kit in 1 to 260 a scale. Theirs was smaller, of course, but theirs had colored plastic so that the modeler back then didn't have to do any painting, and it had a really good decal sheet that had all the instrumentation, whereas the Renwall kits did not. You had to paint it. This this is an original kit that was issued back in the 1960s. Back in the 1980s, they modified the kit so that it looked like this with the cutaway side. So it's the original kit, but however, it's got the cutaway sides to it. And then at some point after Renwall went defunct, their molds were bought by Monogram and Ravel. And back in the 1990s, Ravel reissued these 1 to 200 scale kits with this box art. And then, more recently, they did a reissue again about five or six years ago before Ravel went defunct, and they did it under the Renwall label. So, whether you buy this kit or this kit, it's the exact same as these old kits from the 1960s. And yes, I have a nice collection of all four of them. The other thing you can do is if you don't want to build the interior, you can do what I did with one of these kits. The exterior shape of these Runwall submarines was fairly accurate. And you know what? They make a pretty good display without the sides being opened up. You got a little they have to do a little bit of work to them, but man, they look really nice when they're done. So you might want to consider doing that. So what we're going to do now is I've got some still photography and we'll do some stills. I'll show you some close-ups of some of the parts, the interior parts and the detailing on these old Renwall kits and some of the interior detail parts on these Ravel kits. Whether you buy one of the Renwall kits that were reissued or one of the Ravel kits, it's a pretty good deal. And you know what? You don't have to super detail them. Just build them right out of the box and have fun. So we'll go over some of the parts and close-ups and then we'll talk about it a little bit on the back side. Stay tuned. Let's start with the Renwall 1 to 200 series. Regardless of the kit's name, they were all the same, except for the Thomas Jefferson version, which had the clear side and is considered the holy grail of these kits. The kit's hull halves were well molded with separate bow and stern sections. The interior parts included the bulkheads, the deck levels, missile launch tubes, propulsion details, and control and crew quarter details. The surface detail on the inside of the port hull section was a bit shallow, but very well done. The piping detail was also a bit shallow. However, when all this surface detail is painted, it has a great additive effect to give the interior areas a very busy appearance. The surface detail on the interior bulkheads was nicely done. The deck machinery detail was somewhat sparse, but also well done. 
The hatch detail on the bulkheads even has the latches molded onto them. Careful masking and painting of the deck machinery adds to the overall busy appearance of the interior. The missile launch tubes are two-part assemblies and I recommend using a flexophile to keep the shapes round while you're working on the seams. There are a lot of torpedoes. However, they have deep rings molded into them towards the front. Note how thick the trees are. This is due to using low pressure injection for the molds. The Revell 1 to 260th scale version was issued after the Renwall kits hit the hobby stores. The Revell's hull sides were the same shape as the Renwall kits, but smaller, and the stern section was molded onto the hull. The Revell decal sheet was very extensive and provided a lot of surface detail that could not be achieved very easily with painting. The original issue of the Revell kit had all the decks molded in a lime green color. The surface detail and the parts count on the Revell kit was about the same as the Renwall kit. Revell molded the missile launch tubes as one piece but in two sections. Revell simplified the construction of the missile launch tubes, however painting the individual tubes is a bit of a challenge. The model stand sets the completed model fairly high which makes it a bit unstable. The deck detail was nicely done and Revell even molded anti-skid plating onto all the deck parts. The bottoms of the one-piece missile launch tubes need to be widened slightly to get them to fit snugly around the elevated positioning discs molded onto the deck. Like its larger Renwall cousin, there's a lot of flash and mold seams to be cleaned up. The shape of the propellers on both the Renwall and Revell kits is fairly accurate. The bulkhead detail on the Revell kit is nicely done and there is a lot of it. Revell even molded the anti-skid deck detail onto the surfaces of the parts that fit into the sub's sail. The Revell torpedoes look a lot more like the real thing than the Renwall versions. The trees on the Revell kit were also thick and you have to be careful when sniffing off the delicate parts. Revell did a great job on molding for the missile launch tubes. They're almost flash free. In the late 1980s, Revell reissued the kit and changed the starboard side of the hull to depict a cutaway. The Revell reissue doesn't have the colored plastic. Considering the age of the molds on both the Renwall and Revell kits, they still look good. And the reissue series on both are well worth the price. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed our second in a series of kits of yesteryear. As I said, whether you buy one of these originals off of eBay, which is where I got these, or you get one of the reissues of the original Renwalls, or you decide to use a Revell kit, or do both of them, I gotta tell you, you'll have a lot of fun building them. With that, please be safe, wear a mask, and happy scale modeling, and don't forget to visit us at www.mikeashy.com and visit us on YouTube on Scale Modeling with Mike Ashy. Have a great evening.